For those of you subscribed to the channel, you're probably familiar with many of the videos on Player's Guide covering collecting for various Nintendo consoles. My name is Ted. How you doing? Welcome to Player's Guide. And on today's episode of Player's Guide, I'm going to be covering the rare games and some of the uh, very uncommon games for the PS1. I'm going to run down the top 10 rarest games for the PS1 to start things off. So the number one uh, the rarest game, or it's recognized as the rarest game. If you look on eBay right now, you're probably going to find more copies of this game than some of these other games on the list, but that's because a lot of people know about its rarity and value. Um, that game is Throne Bone. So Throne Bone is a game that is the prequel to Mega Man Legends, and it came right out right after Mega Man Legends, and um, it did not quite do as well as the Mega Man Legends or Mega Man Legends 2 series, although it doesn't seem to have done horribly bad uh, for sales of this game. But it is a fairly popular game, and it is well recognized as being one of the rarest, arguably. So here's the thing. There is another game that is more rare than this, and that is Siphon Filter 3, the 9-11 edition. The thing about this game, however, was it wasn't officially released. It did go to several retailers, um, and some of those retailers did put it on their shelves, although the game was recalled. It wasn't technically supposed to be sold to anyone. Um, also, some collectors and uh, you know resellers, I guess, were able to get their hands on a few of the recalled copies of this game. So this game is... Uh, very hard to find. Uh, a lot of people, though, may not count it towards a complete North American licensed collection that uh, we're talking about here. Uh, and the reason this was recalled was, uh, I guess they found the cover of uh, the, the game to be a little bit controversial. So they recalled it and changed the cover of the game because of the events of 9-11. And... Uh, the game was released on September 27th, so there was a small window there for them to bring the game back and uh, release it to uh, retailers. But uh, it, it's thought that not all the retailers um, got the other copy in time and put out this version with the label that, um, that they didn't want to hit store shelves. And that's how people got this game, and that's what makes it rare. The second rarest game is Klonoa. Uh, this one is also rare because it's a popular game, um, but it's not really that well known unless you're, you know, a real serious game collector or you really like PlayStation stuff. Your average gamer doesn't know too much about this game. Um, Klonoa was a series that uh, was expected to be, you know, the next big platformer, and it wasn't. It went under a lot of people's radar. And that makes it rare and desirable uh, because of that. You're going to find that a lot of these games uh, that are disc-based generation games uh, are rare many times because they didn't have the biggest print run or get the most exposure. And they're also good games that are popular amongst gamers and collectors that know about them. And that's part of the reason that they're so hard to come by is not a lot of people are letting them go. The third game is Team Buddies. So Team Buddies uh, didn't get a ton of exposure and it was released about a month before the PS2 came out. So it was a late release that you know didn't have a lot of hype behind it and I think that's why it's rare. It's also a lot of people seem to like this game so maybe it's another one, too, that is in collector's collections that they're not really willing to let go of. Tail Concreto. This is a game that experienced several delays and lost a little bit of momentum uh, over the course of time of its release or expected release. So it didn't sell quite as well as it was anticipated to sell. Uh, so that could be why this game is, is rare. 
Uh, it's a lot easier to find a Japanese version of this game, too. It wasn't as well received in North America as expected. And you're going to find a lot of uh, the rarer PlayStation games have this issue uh, where they were very well received, perhaps in Japan, not so well received in North America. And this is, there's a lot of JRPGs that are uncommon or expensive for the PS1 because of this. Next up is Burgundia, and this one is another one that falls into that same category as well as it was well received in Japan, not so well received in North America, and that's what brings it up to number five on this list. Number six, same situation, JoJo's Adventure. A uh, pretty popular series in Japan. Uh, not a lot of people know about that game in North America, and in the late 90s, uh, a lot of the Japanese stuff wasn't quite as popular as it is now today, which makes this game more and more um, high in demand in today's current collecting market. Valkyrie Profile, this is a game that was a re late release, which could be why it's rare. Tales of Destiny, a popular JRPG. Um, I guess that's one that will stay in many collectors' collections and doesn't come up for sale as often as you would think. Also, not quite as appealing at the time to a North American audience like we talked about as it was to the Japan audience. Sudoken 2, uh, another uh, Japanese game you can tell by the name. Uh, that was not so well received here in North America. And number 10 on the list is Einhander. This game did not get the biggest release that it should have, but it was very well received. Okay, so let's run down some of the uncommon and rare games that are not quite as rare as these games. They're not the top tier, but you're still going to have a hard time finding them and may have to pay a pretty penny for them. So... We got Vanguard Bandits, Clock Tower, Persona Revelations, R-Type Delta, Thousand Arms, Starblade, XCOM, Tactics Ogre, Discworld, Batman Forever Arcade, Easter Bunnies Big Day, Omax, Diablo, Tomba, Tomba 2, Marvel vs. Capcom, Herc's Adventure, Mega Man Legends 2, Lunar, and Psychic Detective. So that covers it for the rare and uncommon games on the PS2. If you can think of some other ones, write them in the comments below. And next week, I'll be coming out with a PS2 rarity rundown of all the rares and uncommons for the PlayStation 2. That's it for this episode of Players Guide. Keep it retro. Later, players.